Later, the imam is back at his home and angry at the mess made by the Israelis. This is Israel defending itself. The house of a civilian. The house of an imam. The imam of a town. The imam of a region. In fact, the Israelis have been careful not to touch the imam's religious books and all his portraits still hang on the walls. Israeli forces inside Lebanon were looking for the men who'd seized two of their soldiers in a cross-border raid on July the 12th. And this is one fighter they did capture. The Israeli army gave Newsnight a videotape showing an Israeli intelligence officer interrogating a Hezbollah fighter. <laughs> Ali Hassan Salimani is 22 and says he's been with Hezbollah as a trainee since he was 15. In the interrogation, Salimani admits he took part in the operation to kidnap two Israeli soldiers, an operation that sparked off the war. Salimani was captured by Israel 19 days later. He says Hezbollah was surprised by the extent of Israel's Lebanon offensive. On day three of the ceasefire, the Lebanese army finally gets into gear. The government has promised to deploy 15,000 troops in the south, the first time in decades that the National Army will at least try to take control of a region dominated first by the Palestinian militants and then by Hezbollah. Crossing, if not the Rubicon, then at least the Litani. Better late than never, a Lebanese officer told us, but he too did not want to be filmed. South of the Litani, the first town they'll reach is the mainly Christian city of Marjayun, and they'll find remnants of a brief battle here. Hezbollah fighters fired at Israeli troops, then retreated. The 1,000-strong Lebanese army garrisoned here also left town. Its general's been arrested for treason after Israeli reports that he'd sipped tea with an Israeli officer. The United Nations force was supposed to link up with the Lebanese army, but at the roadside, troops from India seemed a little bemused by the sudden turn of events. The ceasefire deal stipulated that no one apart from the Lebanese army and the United Nations should carry arms here. In Qiyam again, we came across a group of men openly brandishing their weapons. They belong to a Lebanese group called the Syrian National Socialist Party. It wants Lebanon to become free of Israel, but part of Syria. The men say they'd been fighting alongside Hezbollah in Marjayun. We were dispersed over the Marjayun area with the Islamic resistance, Hezbollah and the Amal movement. Three tanks passed into Marjayun Square in the beginning. We let them pass into Marjayun Square and they came into our range of fire several meters away. We fired at them and we destroyed the three tanks. You can record this. As far as we're concerned, Saeed Hassan Nasrullah is our rescuer. <laughs> In another Hezbollah stronghold, they're mourning the dead. The decaying and stinking corpses of 14 Hezbollah fighters have been lying in the rubble in the streets of Bint Jibail for many days, since Israeli forces bombarded the town and launched a ground attack. It was fiercely resisted, but Hezbollah had to retreat. They, in turn, bombed Israelis who ventured into the town. The men are either Hezbollah fighters or Hezbollah adherents. The women display deep grief, though they also feel their men have gone to paradise. Now what did your son do? He fights Israel. So this war will not stop? No. 
it's not gonna stop no. because look they killed they killed no. about you see the this Bintjebel did you see the what they destroyed what did they do you know we've been 20 boys. days under the house they shut the house three times they sent us those uh, we smoke we choked we went like uh, 10 kids and uh, 10 women we had nobody in the house we cried we were hungry no food but he was a soldier he was fighting yes he was defending us they killed no. the, the children yes. and the women we killed the soldiers you killed soldiers yes what about all the rockets that you sent into civilian areas what about the bomb from the plane but you can explain that yes, but i'm asking you didn't what kill about the whole building they put down on the people I always spoke of peace, but now everything's changed. Everything has changed? Yes. They killed us, they destroyed our country. What I saw and watched, this changed my whole life this month. My whole life. After any funeral comes a wake. This one, for another Hezbollah fighter, is in Nabatia. A surprise visitor comes to pay his respects. The man who's Hezbollah's number two, his direct boss, is Hassan Nasrallah himself. His movements are kept totally secret. He doesn't even carry a cell phone for fear Israel might track him down by intercepting his calls. It's a unique chance to hear the top leadership's assessment of this month's dramatic events. It's a historical victory for Hezbollah. Israel will remove itself. Can you explain that to me, please? By uh, Israeli behavior, uh, will uh, remove itself. Sorry. When Israel uh, behaves as a, a symbol of terrorism in the world, uh, all the world will uh, uh, behave against Israel. Israel must uh, uh, give uh, Sheba farms, and then we uh, spoke, uh, speak about uh, uh, other things later. We're making a final attempt to get our own direct interview with armed Hezbollah fighters, something the leadership has in general tried to prevent. In a remote mountain village, we're told to set up our camera underneath some trees alongside a damaged house. They're worried the fighters may be spotted by an Israeli drone buzzing overhead. Then the location's changed. We go upstairs into a house frequented by Hezbollah fighters. It's been used as a sniper's nest pictures of two of their now dead colleagues above the window and of course a portrait of their leader finally on the balcony the interview begins yes we are from the men of God the men of Hezbollah yes we are from the Islamic resistance youth but that's where it ended all too suddenly Hezbollah's officers said no more interviews would be granted from then on. The southern border with Israel and in the Lebanese border town of Kafar Kila, those on the Israeli side can easily talk to the Lebanese. An Israeli spy plane in the guise of a crop spraying aircraft patrols the border. The Lebanese road and an Israeli patrol road just yards from each other. There's money to be made here. The souvenir shop owner knows what sells. Posters of the Hezbollah leader and various Nasrallah paraphernalia. His son is clearly happy to perform his own personal act of defiance in the direction of Israel. Opposite lies Israel's border city of Metula, until recently shelled by hundreds of Hezbollah rockets. On the balcony of a house overlooking it, 11-year-old Ali can see a country he's never been to and may never enter. Does Ali think peace can come? I would like for there to be peace. Because war isn't good, war causes destruction and everything. But Ali's desire for peace was not a sentiment we heard from anyone else in the South. And indeed, the prospects for avoiding more conflict look far from bright. The UN is still dithering over how, when and who will be coming. And the Lebanese army is invisible in most of the South's rugged countryside, while Hezbollah watches and waits. <laughs>